James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. What might America look like if we actually followed our own Constitution? We'll take a look at that question on today's Truths That Transform. This is Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. The Constitution in America has been under attack for generations now, beginning with court appointees of FDR in the 1940s. The nation's governing document has been illegitimately rewritten and flagrantly violated by local, state, and federal governments. Nowhere is that more apparent than with the First Amendment's protection of religious free exercise. On today's program, you'll see how a secularized America has become a less free America, and you'll discover how the government is forcing pro-life pregnancy centers to act against their religious consciences in direct violation of the Constitution. And we will share some brand new resources with you to help you understand what's been lost and how we can get back. As we begin, there are some important events on the horizon that will affect religious freedom. Not the least of those is the Supreme Court case of the Masterpiece Cake Shop whose owners were punished for declining to bake a cake for a same-sex wedding according to their Christian convictions. Dr. Richard Land is one of the most intelligent and well-informed voices in the Christian world when it comes to issues like this. Princeton and Oxford educated, he is the president of Southern Evangelical Seminary in North Carolina, and he recently sat down to talk with our own John Rabe. This summer, we expect the Supreme Court to hand down a ruling on the Masterpiece Bake Shop case. Um, I believe that this is a, a watershed case. Do you it agree? Is. And if so, what, what no, do you think is. about that? No, it is. It is. Frankly, I think that we're going to win that one five to four. Uh, but we could lose it five to four. It depends on which way Kennedy jumps. As it often um, does. Um, if we had not gotten Gorsuch, we would have lost it. The um, question is whether or not conscience can be coerced by the government to do that which is unconscionable to them. Um, I believe, and let me say this as firmly and clearly as I can, I believe that it is the uh, innate right should be protected by the Constitution that a person should not have to be, compa should not be compelled by force of law or fine or losing their business to do something which they believe is uh, a violation of their conscience even if they are serving the public. You know, it's not, it, it, the, uh, the excellent point was made in the California case that, that uh, it's not that they're asking them to um, sell them a cake. They'll sell them a cake. They want them to bake a cake and, and to use their artistry to decorate that cake. Uh, that goes beyond what's required by the public accommodation laws. I think the problem too is of course that at the end of the day, it really is about more than cakes. You touched on the coercion issue. There is a, a there is an agenda here that's about more than getting a photographer getting a cake because they could buy a cake. Well, anywhere. that's right. I mean, this, the, the 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 comparisons to the civil rights movement are nonsense. Um, there were sections of the country where um, African Americans could not get public accommodation. They're in a city in America. They're not a town in America where a a, a baker or a wedding photographer or a florist would not be more than happy to provide their services to assist in a wedding between two people of the same sex. So why single out Christians and try to coerce them? Uh, it's because this has never been about tolerance. It's never been about tolerance. It's always been about 
the uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, whatever today, um, alphabet um, groups wanting to compel society to not only tolerate, but affirm and normalize their behavior. That's, that's always been what it's about. You know, they've even said, we're going to force religions to take homosexuality, homosexual behavior out of the list of sins. Good luck. That ain't going to happen. And, you know, for me, the question of how, what your attitude is about uh, same-sex behavior is a litmus test for whether you are, whether you are really evangelical or not. Um, there's no way you can square that circle. Uh, if, you, if you believe in biblical authority and you put yourself under biblical authority, the strongest condemnations of homosexual behavior are in the New Testament, not in the Old Testament. Romans chapter 1, 1 Corinthians 6 are Waterford crystal clear. God never condones same-sex behavior. Now, same, you can have a same-sex temptation that isn't any more sin than a heterosexual temptation would be. But when you let that temptation move over into the lust of the, of the eye and the lust of the mind, much less taking part in that relationship, then you're crossed into sin. Final question, what has happened to the, the Constitution in America and, and, and what can be done about that? Where, where are we at constitutionally? Well, there's nothing wrong with our Constitution and nothing wrong with our system of government that better people in office wouldn't cure. <laughs> um, you know, we had a president for the last eight years before President Trump, Barack Obama, whose attitude toward the Constitution, I think I can best sum up by a story that Walter Kaiser, the great Old Testament scholar, told me a few years ago. He said that he was in a um, major liberal seminary um, when he was a young man with a, a friend. And uh, this major, at this major liberal seminary, one of the students said, well, Professor so-and-so, could you summarize for us what the New Testament doctrine of sin is? And so he did. And, and Dr. Kaiser said, you know, the Apostle Paul couldn't have done a better job himself of describing in 20-minute synopsis what is the New Testament doctrine of sin. It was so good that some of the um, students started getting under conviction. And so finally, one of them said, well, Dr. So-and-so, you don't really believe that, do you? Well, I said, of course I don't believe it. You didn't ask me what I believed. You asked me what the Bible taught. Uh, Barack Obama understands what the Constitution says. He just doesn't believe it. And he didn't abide by it. And that's really been the case on the left for uh, at least a full generation. Now. It has, but Barack Obama took it to new lengths. Hmm. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, Dr. Land, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, you for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. The founders of America recognized the sinfulness of humanity. As a result, they limited the power of government through the Constitution, and they made arrangements for school children to be taught biblical truth, which they knew was essential for a free society. But in recent decades, the left has ignored the Constitution and sought to implement their agenda by using the force of the state, which is more in keeping with the ideas of Karl Marx than of Thomas Jefferson. Dr. D. James Kennedy shares more in this portion of his message, the Bible and the Constitution. In 1787, 55 founders of this country met to perform what has been called the miracle in Philadelphia and gave out which, that which has been described in England as the greatest work of the mind of ever struck from the mind of uninspired men, the Constitution of the United States. There is no doubt that there is greater controversy over just exactly what it was that they gave us and what were their intentions in giving it to us than there has ever been before. In 1986, a federal judge in Chicago said this, the truth is that America's origins are Christian and that our founding fathers intended and achieved full religious freedom for all within the context of a Christian nation. In the First Amendment as it was adopted rather than as we have rewritten it. 
May I say that many of these principles have been so obscured in recent decades as to be almost unrecognizable. They gave us a government by law and not by men. That is the meaning of a republic. A republic is a government by law. Second principle that they gave us was that all men are created equal. Now this was a radical departure from what had been known. In England you certainly didn't have equality. You had the nobility and hoi polloi, the unwashed masses, the many. And uh, that was completely eschewed by the founding fathers who believed that all men were created equal. The Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. And so therefore they saw that men were created equal before God. And so therefore they gave us that equality. Now that was the principle. It took us another hundred years before that principle was fully explicated and uh, all men were considered to be equal. But the principle was enshrined in the Constitution. Thirdly, they gave us inalienable rights. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, said Thomas Jefferson in his uh, declaration. The truth of the matter is, though Jefferson was probably the least person to want to acknowledge this, is that these were not self-evident. They were something that was taught. They were things that were taught in the scripture, that people had rights that came from God. God, by the way, guarantees our rights in the Ten Commandments. The right of private property is guaranteed in the commandment, thou shalt not steal. The sanctity of life and our right to life is guaranteed in the commandment, thou shalt not kill. And so the various rights that we have come from the guarantees that God has given us by his commandments. Do away with the commandments and you do away with our inalienable rights. So you see that when the Supreme Court says we can't put the Ten Commandments up on the walls of our schools, that they are indeed chipping away at the inalienable rights that we have from God. Though most people don't recognize what's happened. As I said, most people usually end up saying what happened. Liberty. Christians believe the text that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free, the Bible says. And when the shackles of sin had been broken, shortly thereafter, everywhere, those who had been set free by Christ and had been given spiritual freedom began to seek political and civil freedom as well. And so it was a tremendous impetus of Christian redemption that moved people to seek the liberty in every part of their lives. And so that was guaranteed to us in the, in the Constitution, an extent of liberty never before seen anywhere else in the world, and it came from the Word of God. All of these things and many others show us that it was out of the Bible that the principles of Christianity were brought forth and wedded to the principles of civil government. As Dr. Kennedy noted in his message, how far we have fallen. The principles of biblical Christianity gave birth to the freest nation in modern world history. But today, that freedom is being taken away in the service of a far left agenda of sexual anarchy. A recent series of cases is now before the Supreme Court regarding pro-life pregnancy centers in California that are having to battle for their most basic constitutional rights. Our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb has more. This bill basically forces every private pregnancy care center in the state, over 150 compassionate, uh, service-oriented groups, to advertise directly for abortion and abortion services. In 2016 in California, a law went into effect that forces crisis pregnancy centers, which provide loving alternatives to abortion, to advertise that which they find abhorrent. This law could effectively shut down many of these centers, such as a woman's friend in Marysville, north of San Francisco. 
We seek to provide resources and support for women who are in an unplanned pregnancy so that they can possibly, we hope, choose life. We see approximately 800 women a year for pregnancy tests and 85% of those women choose life. We asked Carol about California's law related to crisis pregnancy centers. It provides a phone number for them to call. And so in effect, if a woman walks in our doors and reads that sign, she might say, oh, I could get a free abortion at that number. And she'll turn around and walk out before we ever get to talk to her. This is so repugnant. It is so opposite of what they believe in that to have to have that advertisement promoting something that is completely uh, disagreeing with, with the pro-life message is, is so discouraging that many of them will, will probably just shut down. We know that. Attorney Brad Dacus is the director of the Pacific Justice Institute, which has filed suit against this new law on behalf of a woman's friend and all the other crisis pregnancy centers in California. Um, this is like uh, telling Alcoholics Anonymous that before they can have a meeting, they have to have a large poster and ha or handouts as to where uh, their, their uh, members can go to get free uh, booze. There have been some complaints that it gives the appearance that we as a clinic are saying an abortion would be a good alternative for you without even speaking to the patients. So um, some of the medical directors of the other clinics have expressed concern that it is speaking for them as medical professionals saying that they support abortion and here's where you would go to get one. One of those women helped by a woman's friend is Hillary, who two years ago found herself in a difficult situation. I found out that I was pregnant and I was addicted to heroin at the time and homeless. So I decided that I could not take care of a child. That I could barely take care of myself, just my situation in my life and I decided that I needed to have an abortion. I called Planned Parenthood to find out how to get an abortion set up, and they told me I needed a proof of pregnancy and an ultrasound. So I came here, I knew what their mission was and what they would, that they would be against me having an abortion, they would try to talk me out of it, but I just figured, okay, well I can just get, you know, go through it, however, and just get my proof of pregnancy so I can get this abortion. Well, when I came through these doors, they were so wonderful here. They were so kind to me and not judgmental. Once I saw the ultrasound, I knew that my heart and my mind had been changed and that I wanted to have my baby. Are you glad that you chose life for your baby? I don't even know where I would be right now without him. I love him so much and he gives me this motivation that I never had. And he has changed my life and God has just blessed me with my beautiful boy. And through some of these wonderful ladies here, I now am a Christian and have a relationship with Jesus Christ. What do you think of this new law requiring clinics like this to say, hey, if you want an abortion, here's the number to call, low cost or free. Women come in here so early in their pregnancy, and if they if they see that and they call that number, you know, Planned Parenthood might convince them that it's just a blob of tissue or some of the lies I've heard, and I've been to Planned Parenthood before, so I know that they, they tell you lies and make you think that the life isn't important. I would be so devastated right now if I would have had an abortion, and I know some people who have had abortions, and everybody that I know that's had an abortion, and I know several women who have been in my situation and they chose the abortion instead, and they regret that now. They go through their lives sad. When this was signed into law, we filed our lawsuit to challenge this uh, within 24 hours. The legal efforts to stop this law failed at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco. However, that is the most overturned Court of Appeals in the nation. So now Brad Dacus is appealing this case to the U.S. Supreme Court. Imagine any other business having to promote, if you will, their competitor 
when you walk in or you go into a, a Baptist church and they say, well, you have to have a sign up pointing people to the local mosque or you go into the local mosque and you have to have something that promotes that they go to the Baptist church. I mean, it's insanity what California is dictating to these ministries. Some of the pregnancy centers are obeying the new law. Others are not because of the legal efforts to declare it unconstitutional. One-way tolerance isn't tolerance at all. And that's, that's what this law, law basically does. It only picks on and only deals uh, with pro-life pregnancy clinics, uh, those that don't do abortions. And then, of course, Planned Parenthood is delighted. There's absolutely no requirement for them to have a sign uh, telling women where they can get uh, pro-life or post-pregnancy uh, support. And we at Pacific Justice Institute are representing a number of these pro-life clinics in a case that right now, as we speak, is pending before the United States Supreme Court. It is patently absurd that pro-life Christian pregnancy centers would be required to advertise abortion services that go against their conscience. This is government-compelled speech of the first order. Our First Amendment guarantee of religious free exercise has been tossed aside in favor of a monstrous and completely court-fabricated supposed right to kill babies in the womb. Do you ever wonder how we can get back from the cultural precipice on which we now stand? What would America look like if we regained our Constitution and freedoms? Well, we have an outstanding new and practical resource that will show you. And here's my dear friend, Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy, to tell us more. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you, Frank. That resource is the brand new book by veteran Washington journalist Robert Knight, entitled, A Strong Constitution, What Would America Look Like If We Followed the Law? In this critically important book, you'll discover how our freedom has been eroded in everything from our economic decisions to our jobs to our families. And you'll discover a roadmap for restoring our constitutional freedoms. Our founders intended us to have a limited government, believing that less government equaled more freedom. But today, the government is the engine the left uses to drive every bit of their agenda from abortion to same-sex marriage, from redistribution of wealth to socialized health care. It's urgent that you read this book and share it with others to discover where we went wrong and how we can regain our liberty. And we'll send you a copy right away as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll-free 877-962-7677. Or go online to djkm.org. Your contribution will enable us, among other things, to train future leaders in a firm constitutional worldview through our D. James Kennedy Center for Christian Leadership equipping them to attain leadership positions in local, state, and federal government where they can make an impact. And if you're able to give a generous donation of $40 or more, we'll also include my father's powerful and insightful message, The Bible and the Constitution, on DVD. In his message, my dad shows the unmistakable link between biblical Christianity and the development of America's constitution, which made us the freest nation on earth. You'll be amazed to discover how essential Christianity was to the founding of the nation, and you'll be reminded how this truth has been hidden by our modern educational institutions. That's the new book, A Strong Constitution, What Would America Look Like If We Followed the Law by Robert Knight, as well as the DVD message, The Bible and the Constitution, as our thanks for your generous donation of $40 or more. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677 or go online to djkm.org. Noted commentator Charles Krauthammer once aptly observed that liberals don't care what you do as long as it's mandatory. Indeed, it's the coercive power of government 
that reveals the depths of mankind's corruption. And this strong and intrusive government hand is part and parcel of the left's program for implementing their agenda. In March, the Supreme Court heard a group of California cases in which pro-life pregnancy centers are being compelled by state law and against conscience to post advertisements for abortion services in their offices. Such a law seems self-evidently contrary to the First Amendment's protections on free speech. But we live in an era where government bureaucrats run roughshod over the Constitution with a particular emphasis on abridging the freedom of Christians who fail to support abortion, same-sex marriage, and a host of other unbiblical practices. And once again, we wait for the high court swing vote Justice Anthony Kennedy to hand down his tablets from on high, informing hoi polloi like us what the Constitution means this week. In the recent past, leftist forces in our government have strong-armed Americans, forcing them to purchase health insurance, bake cakes and provide flowers and photography for same-sex weddings, and even forcing a group of largely elderly nuns to include abortifacients and contraceptives in their health insurance plan. Coercion is, of course, antithetical to a free society. If your actions are compelled, they are not free. Scripture tells us, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. This is something America's founding generation recognized as elemental, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these is liberty. The framers of our Constitution understood that true freedom was only compatible with limited government. Today, the idea of limited government is considered oxymoronic by the far-left denizens of the swamp that is Washington, D.C. Instead, we have runaway government, forcing Christians to act against deeply held convictions in service of hard-left policies taken directly from the playbook of Marx, Engels, and Lenin. This is about as far from the American ideal as you can possibly get. Only in reclaiming our Constitution can we reclaim freedom. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Truths That Transform. I'm Frank Wright. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. When people are outside of Christ, they are either going to have tyranny or they are going to have anarchy. There is no prosperity. There is no freedom without God. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.